Hi, this is Stacia, and I wanted to share, um, well, you guys are in for a real treat today because this is probably the most wild Icelandic gambit I've ever had in my life. It was really fun, really intense, and I thought it would be a great one for us to analyze in the miniature series um, because the game is only 15 moves long, so it fits my criteria. And, um, and really, you know, if I can learn one or two things about a game like this, then I feel like, um, then I've accomplished something. So, <laughs> plus it'll be fun. So let's have a look at this one. My opponent was Kafir, rated 1552, and I was rated 1435, Midna's Lament. And, um, so he's 100 points higher rated than me, which always makes me nervous, but... Okay, we have a Scandinavian, and I played knight f6. So this is my new way of playing the Scandinavian. Um, and I'm always doing this in hopes of the Icelandic gambit. My opponent played c4 instantly, and I played e6. So here we go. This is the starting point for the Icelandic gambit. Now he can decline. He can decline. <laughs> no, he can decline with d4 if he like. Um, or he can accept the gambit. And my opponent did accept. So this is now an Icelandic gambit accepted. And here I kind of show the point of this gambit, which is our bishops are uh, have really nice scope. We have better development. The knight's out. And uh, the queen has a clear file. <coughs> so sorry, I'm a little under the weather. You may hear me sniffling or coughing. I do apologize in advance. And all right, my opponent here, I always think the toughest move to face is knight f3. Um, I like to see d4, and this is in my um, icy attack video, because I like the move bishop b4 check. And even though th this is theory, like white is walking a tightrope in these lines. And if white doesn't know what they're doing, they're going to get crushed. Like, for example, this is a bad move, which looks totally natural. Then the knight comes in using the pin, and it can get crazy. But okay, you can check out my other video um, on that line. My opponent played an unusual move, which is the move b3. Okay, and this is just too slow, I think. I mean, he should definitely develop a piece. And um, I've faced this before in Blitz. And I remembered that the computer recommends bishop c5. So I did play this move, and it gives black a pretty strong advantage already, like um, minus 0.8. And we're eyeing the f2 square. This is really the, the point of focus with ideas of knight e4 and maybe queen f6. <coughs> so sorry. <laughs> So my opponent played bishop b2, and I guess this was his idea. But now black can play a really interesting move, which was played. And um, that's the move knight e4. And this is very strong. Computer says minus 3.5. I can't totally explain why it's so strong, which is why we're looking at this. I just knew that the computer recommended this. But let's look and see what's happening. So, I mean, obviously we're attacking f7. And a natural move would be knight a3, which doesn't work because of bishop takes a3. And then pawn takes, and we still take an f7 with a fork. Knight takes f7. Also, um, this is the kind of move I wouldn't see on my own, this knight to e4 move. Because the bishop is able to capture on g7. But of course, that does not help development, and that's just way too greedy and would even open the G file for my rook. So that would be a horrible uh, thing to play in this position. So knight e4 is actually very strong, and um, my opponent played what I thought was the best move, but apparently it's not, and it's the move d4. And so um, I wasn't sure what to do in this situation. So Here's where I'm starting to learn, and um, wow, there's an incredibly strong move here. 
And I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen this before. It's the move bishop e4 check. I'm not totally sure why this is so strong. Because I would I would think, um, oh, I do see why. The knight and the bishop are guarding c3 and d2. So this just looks really bad, doesn't it? So like, for example, if they try to block, can't I just take? I can. I take with the knight. I'm hitting the queen. And if queen d2, I just want a free piece. And if they take back, I do this. It's even worse. This would be just horrible. All right, so white would lose. So, wow, bishop b4 check is um, hard to meet. And the best move, it says, is king e2. And um, I think we can all agree that we'd like to be black here. <laughs> Or as Michael Joseph would say, everyone wants to be black. So, um, so d4, and I did not find that move. I played queen f6. So this is the second um, recommended move by the computer, but it's not nearly as strong. It gives me a minus 2.7 um, advantage. So I've seen this idea before where you threaten checkmate. So that was my idea. And also, I want to castle queenside as quickly as possible so that um, white would be unable to take my bishop. So that's kind of what I was thinking as well. And um, so here, white has queen f3. This is interesting. My opponent didn't find this move, but after queen f3, I can still play bishop e4 check. So this, this check is really strong in the Icelandic gambit. That's something I'm learning. Yeah, and the king's going to have to go to e2 again for the same reason as before. It's just like these dark squares are just like crushed. With the knight and the bishop converging on them, it just seems like black just gets in right away. So very interesting. Now, my opponent didn't play that. They played f3, which, oh, wow, computer is recommending that as a move. f3, I thought, had to be wrong. But I wasn't sure why. And I played, um, well, it looks like I played an okay move. Best again is bishop b4 check. For the same reason as before, just the knight and bishop converging on these two dark squares is killer. Um, queen h4 check is possible here. That looks really crazy to me. So if we go here... I mean, what's the idea? There's no g3. Why? If g3. Oh, it's this typical idea, of course. Then we win the rook. Huh. Okay, so queen h4 check is, does work there. These are great things to review. Um, okay, so I'm going to go back to the game. I played uh, knight c6 which the computer liked at first, but now I see that um, F takes E4 almost gets white out of things. So, okay, I sacked my bishop. Um, oh wait, F takes E4. Oh, I sacked the knight. Yeah. Can't take the bishop, why? Oh, because I'll take theirs. There's so much going on in this position that <laughs> please forgive me if I'm missing all kinds of stuff because I probably am. But I also love to hear if you guys, yeah, I would take here and then this would be a threat, which is kind of nice. And again, there's no knight a3. So this looks really good. Again, knight a3, bishop takes, pawn takes, checkmate. <laughs> so they would just lose the knight, I guess. Um. Yeah, my opponent took this way, though. They decided to take my knight. And this is really just a fascinating position, isn't it? So black has, like, all their pieces developed. White has a huge center. The bishops attacked. But most of white's pieces are on the back row. Not recommended. So um, 
Now, I don't think the king's castling anytime soon. So just an absolutely fascinating position. And I played the move. Wow, this is a move that would make the game equal. There's only one continuation here that gives black a strong advantage. And there's one that gives a decent advantage. Queen h4 is the strongest. Let's see why. Queen h4 check, g3. And of course, queen takes e4 check. And after queen e2, can we take the rook? Queen takes h1. And black is still um, minus 1.3 here. But we're up in exchange because we did um, sack the knight. Now they can take here, can't they? Wow, what happens if they take? Oh, we take here. <laughs> Crazy Jess. I probably tell I'm not used to lines like this. Okay. But I played Castle's Queen side. I thought this was okay. I like that this pawn is now pinned and can't take my bishop. But this idea doesn't work so good because of Queen F3. So Queen F3 offers a queen trade. And I'm down a piece, right? So what could I do here? I guess I could go knight takes d4. Looks like the only way to really continue. Yeah, now they can trade queens. Hmm. I can do this. King e2, can I take the rook? Not really. I gotta take the queen. Gotta take the queen first. And knight d2. Now I can take this. And um, I have no idea what's happening, but I can see that if we just do a, a piece count, it looks like uh, white has two knights, two bishops, and we only have two bishops. And they're missing a rook, and we have two rooks. So um, how many pawns? One, two, three, four, five, six. And we have six, but way worse pawn structure. We have, well, both sides have three pawn islands. Yeah, I, this is a very um, strange position. Computer says white is slightly better. I think it's because they have two minor pieces for a rook. So... Um, if we're just being strictly materialistic, we could say that two minor pieces are one point better than a rook. So, and the computer's saying plus 0.9. So, all right, very interesting though. <clears throat> so, I missed, um, before I castle queenside, I need to look for res resources like queen f3. So, I'll definitely be doing that in the future. And I also, um, it looks like I missed queen h4 check twice. But let's continue because this game is awesome. <laughs> so after Castle's queen side, luckily my opponent did not play that. He played e5, which um, he wants me to play queen h4 check, I guess. So I did. So I did find it here because he kind of made me. And after g3, this is a typical idea. I'm surprised he didn't see this. So um, he went knight e2. I took the rook. Hmm, is that the best? I also have knight takes d4 here. Even stronger. Knight takes e4 and also knight takes, uh, I'm sorry, not, not e4, d4. And knight takes e5 as well is a move. So this would create discoveries, which is really interesting. But, I mean, it's a rook. <laughs> Hard not to take that. Queen d3 was played. I don't know about this move either. I think white's just lost, though, here. I think it's too late. So let's just continue. Queen d3. And now I played the move knight before. Why not throw a tempo move in and then say, hey, make sure you guard your um, c2 square. So he went queen d2. Computer says minus 10, so wow. It's just an overwhelming attack, I guess. And um, yeah, and I did find the best move here, bishop h3. So just threatening mate on f1. 
looks really uncomfortable, doesn't it? And um, now my opponent cracked under the pressure. Queen f4 defending the bishop, but now I, I was given this opportunity for a, um, a nice fork to finish the game, forking the king, the queen, and the bishop. And as my kids would say in class, and the pawn too. <laughs> so, okay. I hope you enjoy this uh, game. I think there is a lot of cool like tactical ideas to keep in mind. And let's go through it one last time just to look at maybe some key moments and key things to learn. Okay, so we had a knight f6 Scandi leading to an Icelandic gambit accepted. And my opponent played um, this move b3. So this is a mistake because of what I did in the game, bishop c5. And again, even here, um, bishop b2 is also a mistake. So basically this whole, this whole analysis is based on white incorrectly playing the Icelandic gambit. So this is, this is us uh, refuting this way of playing. Um, all right, and knight e4 is the way to do it, which I knew, but I never saw, uh, I never knew what to do against d4, and now I know. Now it's bishop b4 check. That's probably the main thing I want to learn from this game, is that bishop b4 check is really strong after d4. I have a feeling that's like a thematic thing in this um, opening, so I'll be keeping that in mind. <laughs> 